Good morning. Welcome to the Parenting Versus Podcast. Buenos dias podcast. <laughs> Buenos dias podcast. Uh, inland California, that California lifestyle though edition. Yeah, so, part two, I guess. Part two. Um, um, here we are, man. Here we, we are. We made it to Palm Springs. Made it to Palm Springs. It is um, hotter than a mofo. It's hotter than a firecracker, as my dad would say. <laughs> and really quickly, I forgot in the last one. Um, oh, that was my coffee cup. Slamming on the, on the coffee table. But, uh, you know, this is our creative little outlet, and I like to encourage creativity. And one person that is super creative, has a very good imagination and very good talent is uh, Ryan Freeman. I just wanted to really quickly shout out to him. I forgot last time. Uh, he's my bro-in-law, and when he hangs out, we like to sip on really good craft brews and talk about all kinds of really cool stuff, culture, theology, whatever. But he has, uh, he's an author. He writes um, books. He has a, um, a, a really thick book that would take me probably 10 years to read through. <laughs> uh, and it's called, um, Rainspell. it's called Rainspell. Uh, and then he has a novelette called, um, The Trombonist. Find and also The Great Isle. The Great Isle. Is the second book right. in the Rainspell. Yeah. Hmm. Find Ryan. Series? Yeah. Do a Google search for Ryan P. Freeman. Check out his books. Buy them on Amazon. Support your creativity like this That's is right this is our little this is our little creative little thing but. and i have to tell you like so he's my brother so i know him pretty well i would nay even say we are maybe best friends aside from lorenzo here um and she told me that yesterday on the car right my brother's my best friend with a tear in her eye <laughs> yeah i did it's true though um we're like four years apart and we're super close and um honestly it's just really funny because i know some people have weird relationships with their siblings but my brother and I are tight like Bud Light. Um, <laughs> <laughs> no, he gets me. I have a weird sense of humor, and I'm kind of an all-around weirdo, and he totally gets it, and he's cool with it. So, yeah. thanks, bro. Um, yeah. But yeah, no, he's an author, and I really, like, I wanted to just kind of side note what you said. Mm -hmm. um, because I, I really admire my brother's tenacity. He has been, like, living the dream, but it's, he has given so much to make his dream happen. Um, He's always wanted to write a book. He has literally been working on, well, he worked on his first book for, I don't know, something like 10 years. Um, and then half the time he was working at a gas station. He has a degree and he was having a hard time finding a job and everything else. And, um, but he never, he never gave up on his dream. And I like really admire that. Um, so even though, you know, he's four years younger than me, I look up to him. <laughs> Oh. Well, I mean, you're shorter than me, too, so I sort of look down to you as well, Ryan. But um, no, but seriously, I just like dreaming and living your dreams. It's it's something that has inspired me because I, I look at my brother and I look at what he's done to just make his dream happen. And it's awesome. Mm -hmm. And it's just like I I love that. Yeah, I love that. So if you want to write a book, you want to paint a painting, you want to set a world record, like don't give up on your dream. Yes, yeah, make it happen. You can do it. I 100 percent support that. Yeah, and I 100 percent. 100% support Ryan P. Freeman's books and creativity and all that good stuff. And it's, um, I think it's really good to support the, the smaller, like less produced sort of things. Um, just because you can kind of get a real feel of what's, what's happening in our culture. Um, yeah, well, you know, what's, you know, what's kind of funny is like, I was thinking about George R. R. Martin, you know, Game mm -hmm. of Thrones, GOT. Um, <laughs> <laughs> oh man, we should spoil it for all no, this. <laughs> do, don't do that. That's so mean. <laughs> don't do it. Um, but you know, he's, he lives in Santa Fe, New Mexico. Um, and we were talking the other day about how not Ryan, but George R. R. Martin. George R. R. Martin lives in Santa Fe. Right. And he wrote Game of Thrones a long time ago, like way before it ever became a TV show, way before it ever hit the mainstream. Um, and we were talking with our buddy Jeff the other day about how he still writes like all of his manuscripts for books on, um, what is it? It's like, oh, uh, yeah. Casey and, uh, and, uh, Amy were telling us, yeah, they, they, he writes it on like some super old computer, like a Commodore 64 or some, something like some crazy, like late eighties computer. If that thing goes down, it is lost. Right. <laughs> Forever. And they were, t they were saying like, like that's one of the things that the publishers and even HBO was really worried about is that he's going to write this amazing like ending or amazing like story. And then it's all going to crash and burn in like a really super outdated operating system, little computer. Uh, so they have like special tech support teams <laughs> that have knowledge of these like antiquated, uh, you know, computers. I think that's so awesome. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So. Yeah, but they... he didn't give up on his dream, even though he was typing it out on like a late 80s computer. 
Um, in fact, now that he's famous, he still is doing that. So it's kind of cool because it's like people, there's, there's dreamers out there. And people that are dreamers don't let things get in their way. They don't let technology get in their way. They don't let working at a gas station get in their way. They don't let anything stifle their creativity. They just press on. And so mm-hmm. shout out to my bro. There you go. There you and go. I just looked up August 1st, 1996 was when Game of Thrones was published. Oh my gosh, I was 12. So there you have it. <laughs> I was 12 years old. <laughs> yes, you were. Jeez. So, yeah. And then on the less produced things, like... um. I, I'm I'm I think I'm conditioned to like I, to feel comfortable when something is very highly produced, like the Bad Christian podcast. I love it. It's one of my favorite podcasts. I've been listening since I worked at Verizon. So I don't know when that was, like 2009. I feel like we plug them every single episode. We well, it's start just getting royalties. Well, yeah, you know, yeah. Give us money, guys. Ten cents. I know Ten you got you, you guys are rolling in gold. Like, <laughs> like what's the what's the duck uh, that jumps into the gold? Oh, that's um, um, Scrooge McDuck. Yep. You're know, like Scrooge McDuck jumping into your bad Christian money. Ducktails. Ducktails. Yeah, I love that. Yeah. Um, but yeah, the Bad Christian podcast is is awesome, and it's just produced really well. You know, you listen to it, and it's just like comfort. Or or the podcast we were listening to last night, S Town, mm-hmm. Shit Town. Yeah. That's so good. It's it, super good. You guys should listen to S Town, Shit Town. Sorry, sorry for uh, swearing. Well, it's the podcast itself is called S Town, but it but stands it's, for Shit Town. Yeah, and there's um, cuss words in it. It is so. one of the most downloaded podcasts. Sorry, parents, if you just heard me say the S word. Yeah, um, my freaking ears. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, but it is one of the most downloaded podcasts in history. Um, did you know that? S Town. Yeah. It's so good. It like he he did a really good job of just capturing something just obscure. really obscure, and like he got a really. I'm not going to spoil anything for anybody, but... Yeah, it's really good. And it's it's like you... Okay. I like how Lorenzo prefaced it for me. Because he had listened to the first episode and I hadn't. He's like, well, just listen to this and, and see what you think. So so we put it on in the car because we had a long drive yesterday. And um, <laughs> he's like, just imagine Zach Galifianakis talking. When you hear this person talk, mm-hmm. imagine Zach Galifianakis. And I'm like, okay. Um totally get it it's so funny like when you when you put that face on the voice you're hearing it like makes the whole thing come alive um and then of course i had to like take it to the lab and i wanted to kind of see what the actual person looked like so i looked him up and but that might spoil some things for you as well so just a just a you know just you start listening yeah start listening and then once you get to maybe the end of the second episode beginning of the third then you can start looking it up um because you'll be at that point where it won't be a, a surprise anymore but it's interesting. It's really interesting because I, the person, did not match the voice for me. Um, when I looked him up, I was like, "Oh wow!" I would have not guessed that he looked like that. But it was interesting. Um, good podcast. Really interesting stuff. Really just a nice snapshot into somebody's mentality and brain, and then it's set against a backdrop of like just a strange small town. Mm-hmm. Um, I really do think that truth is stranger than fiction a lot of the time. And this is one of those cases. So check it out. S-Town is pretty great. Um, you're going to hear some F-bombs in there. You're going to hear some some naughty words. Some racism. Some racism. It is definitely not for little little ears. Um, We're only on, ep- on chapter three, too. Yeah. Um, we are on chapter three. We haven't started it yet. But it's not for little ears. So listen to it maybe when you're in grown-up company. Uh, it is... It's in a small southern town, so if you can imagine some of the undertones that, that that's associated with, like... Mm-hmm. Do you know what's crazy to me, too? What? Is we have cable channels in this hotel that we're staying in, and I was more entertained by a free podcast than I am of cable channels. Like, we're kind of watching Dog the Bounty Hunter a little bit right now, and it's It's, on it's mute. interesting, you know, and I... I <laughs> What would you say? I said it's on mute. It's on mute. Yeah, it is. It's actually playing it right even now. Need work. <laughs> no, you can see what's going on. But a lot of times, I think like radio is making a huge comeback. You know what I mean? Like radio, like before TV, radio was a thing. Like people would gather around the radio and stare at the TV, stare it at was the a radio. Culture that was like yeah, booming. listen to their listen to their stories and like. I get that now. Like we're having a revival, revi- revitalization, revival, revitalization. I want to say revival for everything because my Pentecostal revival. roots. We're having but, a um, revival of the radio. <laughs> having a revival of the radio. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Just kidding. 
And wow. uh, yeah, I mean, it like totally gets your imagination going. You can just picture things like when in, in S Town, when he's telling the stories, you can just like imagine and like your imagination, I think, is always going to be much more clear and just. Well, it, your, your brain also personalizes things to you. Mm hmm. You know, it gives you the picture that you want and it makes the story personal to you. Right. So that's kind of cool. Yeah. It's like your own modified cable TV in that's your head. That's true. Yeah. We listened to it last night and we even had a TV. We had, there was an option for us to have TV shows and we chose And, and to... it's cable and we don't have cable at home. So no, like this is like a luxury, dare I say. Right. You know, we come, to, we come to a hotel and we're like, wow, cable, like we can watch anything. I know. But it's almost like that idea of like there's so many choices that it's overwhelming and I feel like I could just sit for an hour and flip through all the channels and not find anything to watch because there's too many choices. Right. Um, also, the movies have commercials. That doesn't really bother me. It doesn't bother you? No, not, not too much. Okay. Um, you know, my parents, side note, back in the day, mm -hmm. in the 80s and 90s, they would record movies off of TV, you know, when you could do that. Oh, yeah, with your VHS mm -hmm. thing. Yeah. And so the movies we had at home always had commercials. Because See, those are recorded. cool, though. If you, if you could find those, it's like a time capsule for I those commercials. Like, that's, that's awesome. I have the whole first season of The Simpsons, actually, hmm. on VHS somewhere at my parents, and it has commercials. Hmm. And it's when Bart Simpson looked different. Um, oh, yeah, they looked way different. And it wasn't as, like, <clears throat> it wasn't as controversial, I think, the first season as it, as it got later. But, I mean, I was, like, five or six, and my parents let me watch The Simpsons, so... They, did, they had no idea. They just saw a cartoon. And... Right. Well, and that was, like, the, really the dawn of, like, cartoons for adults. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? Which yeah. is kind of funny. Right. So. Yeah. So, good times. And we're in, we're in Palm Springs. I know we, we already said that. Um, now you're just bragging. I'm just bragging. No, it's really hot here. <laughs> it is super hot. And we have no kids, which it's kind of good and bad for me, I think. Yeah? Yeah. I mean... Not Okay, sorry about the weird pause. Uh, speaking of our kids and how I miss them, <laughs> my <laughs> my mom uh, called and we had to interrupt the recording. So, um, but we're back. But we're back. <laughs> and See, kids don't ever stop interrupting you. Not even when you're on vacation. Yeah, <laughs> I guess. Yeah. Oh, so timing is everything. It's so funny. Mm -hmm. So I wanted to mention earlier. This is so funny. So we're in Palm Springs, right? We were talking about how it's like really hot here, but it's also really awesome. Um, <laughs> our room, we, we got here last night and it's, it's really big, um, for two people. It's like a small one bedroom apartment, not even small really. I mean, it's like one bedroom, two bathrooms. It's very strange. It has a little mini bar and a dining room and a, and a kitchen and a fireplace and a huge patio. So yeah, I mean, it's not like we're struggling here, but, um, we walked into the master bathroom last night and we just about like lost it. It has a bidet. Mm -hmm. If you don't know what that is, look it up. B I D E T. Yeah. Um, I, I recommend checking out the uh, Jeff Gal Jeff Galifianakis uh, skit. Zach Galifianakis. Oh, did I say Jeff? Jeff? Oh, <laughs> is that a name? Did I say Jeff? Jaffrey. <laughs> Jeff. <laughs> oh, good lord. Um, yeah, the Zach Galifianakis SNL skit. Um, <laughs> It's pretty great. And they talk about bidets. Yeah. So um, it's just funny because we had to like, I had to like mess with it because I just want, not like that, um, but I wanted to, <laughs> wow, now I'm in a hole. Um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh. I just wanted to see how it worked. So I turned all the faucet like levers and things and it's definitely weird. Yeah. I didn't what? sit on it. Just to be clear. Oh, I did. <laughs> Whoa. <laughs> it's one of these things when you're just like... <laughs> Is you're this just, a luxury or you're like, do I feel uncomfortable? <laughs> you're like poor little Albuquerque over here. We just have no idea what these fancy, you know, California things are. Lot newfangled contraptions. Right. In our bathroom. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so weird. <laughs> it is so stinking hot. I know we've been, we've been saying that on almost every podcast about Albuquerque, but Albuquerque is like comfortable and nice compared to this this is I like no i disagree dude i um well okay no i disagree I don't like the humidity that we've had this summer this like, is humid no i don't think so this, this is, is like humid dry heat we haven't had any humidity in albuquerque oh i disagree sir okay okay i could show you facts <laughs> you're like a please don't <laughs> you're like a christian over here no and you're like, I don't care. This is how I feel. I don't need facts. Global warming is not real. Fake news. Hashtag um, fake news. 
Yeah. Oh, oh my so gosh. it's super hot. It's like 107, I think now. Well, not now. It's pretty early in the morning right now. Although when we didn't get here last night, it was 105. So. It was 105. Yeah, the sun had already gone down. The sun had just gone down. That is that is the hottest point of the day, though. Like where when the sun about is about to go down. Yeah. Um. Yeah, it's like 105. Uh, and when you, we got out, it was just like hit us because we Boom. we drove from Laguna Beach where we recorded the podcast yesterday, uh, where it was a comfortable you know 78 degrees. Yeah, and breezy. And yeah, breezy and nice and pretty. And um, <laughs> we got out of the door of our car and just like like a ton of bricks, just like boom. Yeah, it was it was pretty stifling. Super warm. Um, yeah, we went to the grocery store last night and we were like, we're so thirsty. We I like had Gatorade and water and we're, we're like, like chugging. And this looks good. And this looks. I'm so thirsty. <laughs> yeah. So I again, I'm I'm put in my place when I start complaining. Yeah. You know, I'm complaining about Albuquerque's heat. And then <laughs> I come here, and I'm like, oh, a lot of people live here. They like the heat. They, you know, they enjoy it. You know, an interesting fact about Palm Springs that I learned yesterday? What's that? Elvis Presley spent his honeymoon here mm. with Priscilla Presley. And he had a whole, um, I don't know if it was a hotel or an apartment or something. Maybe it was like a condo. Designed. He and Priscilla designed it, and hmm. they stayed here for like I think it was like an extended period of time for their honeymoon. Really? Yeah, and it's called the it's called the Elvis honeymoon, something or other. Um, but that was kind of cool. I don't know. I, I had no idea. Do you know what year it was built? I do not. Um, but it's like I don't know. It's interesting because a lot of really old timey Hollywood people hung out in Palm Springs. You have Bob Hope, who's notorious for his golfing here. Um, Frank Sinatra spent some time here. Lucille Ball. I mean, there's all kinds of people that hung out in Palm Springs. And I just think that that's really cool because this is where old Hollywood used to vacation. And so you have a lot of really cool postmodern architecture. Um, one thing I love about Palm Springs is like when you're driving around, they have preserved the postmodern and like mid-century modern architecture like to a T. And so it's like you're seeing it the way that it was created in its heyday um it's almost like you're driving around and it's it's like <laughs> i don't know how to explain it it's like you're you go through this like time warp and you see exactly what people would have been seeing back in its heyday it hasn't changed that much it's been really well maintained um and like i said i'm kind of an old soul so i you should put that on our on our uh page lorenzo is gonna post some old school palm springs pictures for you because they're kind of great um but I'm like an old soul, and I, I really, like, love that kind of stuff. I could take or leave, like, certain things, but, like, when it comes to old Hollywood or, like, 1960s stuff, I'm all about it. Like, I'm looking for Don Draper, you know, driving down the street. <laughs> yeah. But I just, I don't know. I love it here. I love it here. I feel like this is my element, which is kind of funny, because I'm, like, an old 80-year-old woman in a 30-something body, more or less. Yeah. Yeah, we... <clears throat> Well, I don't know. I, I, I can appreciate the, uh, you know, the old stuff, like the 1960s um, architecture, the uh, 60s music. I don't know if that really does it for me. I'm more of a 70s music type of, like, like that's, that's when rock and roll, I think, started to pick up. Like, the Beatles are, are okay. I can do the Stones. Nice. I I, 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 li I like the Beatles, but I'm not going to say they're, they're the greatest. I, I can appreciate and respect their influence, but... Um, I can't, you know, spend time with the Beatles album and just, like, love it. You know what I mean? I feel like but, it's all about context, though, at the same time. Like, you have to look at what was going on and how controversial their music actually was, like, no, when I, it I, came out. I get it. That's that's what I'm saying. I can appreciate it and I can respect it. But as far as the music, I'm like, okay, this is good. Yeah. You know, whatever. Yeah. Um, but I think I'm more of a 1970s rock and roll type of person. Yeah, I get that. I mean, I get that. I totally get that. Um, yeah. I like it all. I, I, yeah. I really do. Like the, the 60s music, you know, it's it's good. Okay. Um, but, yeah, Lindsay's, Lindsay's heading up for a second. But, um, yeah, 1970s, I, I just love the quote-unquote classic rock stations. Um, I could just throw those on and listen to them for, you know, for a good time and, and uh, just enjoy it. Like Bachman Turner Overdrive, uh, some Jethro Tolls. I think I think Jethro Tolls is actually 1960s. I'm gonna look that up. Um, but uh, you know, those are that's the stuff I 
I really enjoy. Um, uh, and 80s rock, 90s rock, and then today, for, for sure. So I'm kind of rambling because Lindsay's not here, but I am going to talk a little bit about um, how I'm interested in the elevation of places. <laughs> so Albuquerque is is a high desert. Like, you know, people think of Albuquerque, they're like, oh man, it's super, super hot there. And, and if you listen to our podcast, uh, kids in the future, you already know this, but um, people who we don't know, Albuquerque is, it's warm, it's sunny a lot, but it's not Phoenix. And a lot of people confuse New Mexico and Arizona all the time. In fact, we were in the elevator uh, checking into this uh, hotel that we're sitting in, and there was a nice um, you know, dad and his son, I'm assuming that the kid was his son, but anyway, like there was like, like dad and the son and they were in the elevator and they were really nice. Like they were just really friendly. Um, we got in the elevator and they're like, Hey, how you doing? We're like, Oh, you're good. And you start, start the small talk. They're like, oh, where, where are you from? And we're like, Oh, we're from, uh, we're from New Mexico. And he's like, Oh, Mexico, Mexico. You guys are, you guys are super hot there too. And we're like, we just, you know, we, this is the sort of thing we're really used to. And we're like, we just rolled with it. Yeah. We're from Mexico. <laughs> um, but New Mexico is so off everybody's radar. It's it's so insane to me that that it's you know nobody even ever thinks of New Mexico outside of Breaking Bad. Everybody knows Breaking Bad, but even like before Breaking Bad, um, you know all of our friends have stories of when people. Uh, what, what, you know, when they encounter people from outside of New Mexico, even even Colorado, Texas, Arizona, like places that border us, and they'll say things like, "Oh, you're from you're from New Mexico. You speak really good English." This has personally never happened to me, but it happens to a lot of people that we're talking to. But it's it's just crazy to me how how off people's radar New Mexico is, and and I don't blame them. Like, why should they? Why should they think of New Mexico? I guess um, you know they. It's good, I guess, to know about, you know, the geography and the culture of the country that you live in. But, um, you know, when we talk, when we talk to people and say that hey, we're from Albuquerque, we're from New Mexico, they're like, oh, cool, Mexico or Arizona, or oh, they think it's like Phoenix. Nothing like Phoenix. I mean, I don't want to say nothing like Phoenix. There are some similarities. We don't get a lot of rain. Um, I would say we get a bit more than Phoenix, but it's, uh, it's a city that, we have the Rio Grande that goes through um, the center of the city, and on the banks of the Rio Grande, that's the lowest elevation. It makes sense; that's where the river is. But it's 5,000 feet above sea level, and we're in a valley, and it goes up to the Sandia Mountains. At the base of the Sandia Mountains, we're at about 6,300 feet above sea level, and at the peak of the mountain, which is towering over the city, like it's you can't be anywhere in the city without seeing the Sandia Mountains. Um, the top of the Sandy Mountains, I think, are 10,500 feet or 10,700. Like yeah. 10, 10, oh. I know it's like 10 and then an odd number. 10, 3, 10, 5, 10, 7, something like that. Google it. Um, Google it. But, uh, yeah, Albuquerque is, is, is a unique place. It's a different place. Um, if you are super hipster and you're into, like, finding the obscure bands that nobody knows about, you'd probably like Albuquerque because you would live in Albuquerque and you could say, hey, I live in Albuquerque, not some trendy place like Portland. <laughs> Ouch. Some trendy place that everybody wants to be in. Okay, you want to pay $2,500 for a two-bedroom apartment? I live in a lot Have of at it. I live in a, I live in a four-bedroom ranch-style home and I pay, my mortgage is 13. I don't really, but like you can, <laughs> you can say that, hipster person. Um, but uh, it's... It's uh, not as hot as Phoenix. It's, it's, I would say in the summer, we typically have one, two, three days of, of temperatures that are over 100 degrees. By the way, Portland today is supposed to be 107, 108. That's um, unheard of. Yeah, it's, 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 it's crazy. It's so crazy. It's hottest in eight years, I think. Wow. Um, and I don't it, remember it ever being that hot right. when I lived there, ever. Right. Um, Phoenix is, you know, pretty standard. They're above 100 all all summer long and then they have some stretches in june i think where they're above like 110 Oregonians um don't know how to handle that kind right of they and that. and there are times when in phoenix where it gets up to 120 degrees in fact this summer when it was really hot it was so hot the planes couldn't take off 
um, when it's super, super hot, the, there's, there's not enough lift for airplanes and the runways weren't long enough for them to take off, which is insane to me. Mm -hmm. So Albuquerque is nothing like that. We are, we are, we are super warm. Um, we're high desert. We're high desert, 90s, like I said, a couple, couple of days of over 100. Um, if you go to the Sandia Mountains and, you know, Sandia Peak, it's 10,000, above 10,000 feet. So you could be 90, 100 degrees down in Albuquerque and then up on top of the peak, it's 65. Yeah. You know, it's, it's so awesome. Yeah. You can just drive up there and it's, it's beautiful. But I do wish we could sustain palm trees, though. I don't. I hate palm trees. Really? I hate them. Oh my gosh, it's, I love them. It's like another, it's not, it's another, you know, veneer sort of fake thing, I think. They're real trees. I know, but they're not native to this place. They, p people brought them to attract celebrities. They're super, they're not native. Oh, wow. I mean, I think there's like one palm tree that's native. One in the entire... Like, no, 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 not just like a, <laughs> like just a single just tree. Just a single, this is Papa, this is Papa... Uh, Papa palm tree. Papa palm tree. This is the only one that ever lived <laughs> oh here. God. All the other ones were brought. No, but... What uh came first? The palm yeah. tree or the, right. I don't even know. Chicken. They are cool. Okay, I'm, I'm not. I'm not. I'm not going to be negative. I I think that palm trees are okay. I think they but, add an oasis. Well, that's the whole point. They make it feel like an oasis in the desert. Right. Yeah. I like that. I would. I would definitely be uh, more likely to spend time under like a good oak tree or a good cottonwood, or that's the New Mexican in you speaking. Yeah. Or like a good fir tree, or in a. Uh, uh, aspen tree grove. Those are my favorites. I hmm. love aspen trees. I'm, I'm just a mountain person. I know. I know. I try not to hold it against you, but yeah. um, <laughs> no, it's just funny. Lorenzo's a mountain person. I'm a beach person. So we have to somehow find a place where that all can mm -hmm. coexist together. Yeah. Can I shout out New Mexico again? Sure. So New Mexico is not really known for its mountains either, but it definitely has a lot of mountains. <laughs> people, people have no idea about New Mexico. They really don't. You were like geeking out. I'm going to geek out about my state for a second. All right. So we have uh, the Rocky Mountains, believe it or not, Colorado. They're not just yours. They come into New Mexico. They, the southern, the southern uh, you know, start of the Rocky Mountains. What, what is the slogan that the tourism department said? Where the Rockies began, I think. Oh, maybe. Um, but yeah, they're, they're, we have 13,000 feet foot peaks. Um, Colorado's about the... Four, Colorado is all about the 14ers, and I don't know, they, they have four, a, lot, a lot of 14,000 foot peaks. There's a lot of beautiful peaks in Colorado, too. But New Mexico, the tallest peak is uh, Wheeler Peak, and it's 13,000 something. I climbed it two years ago, and it's gorgeous. Um, Alpine Lakes, um, just beautiful, beautiful forests, beautiful mountains. Uh, the Truchas Peaks are, the, are some of the most jagged, rugged peaks. Oh, and, and I'm going to shout out one more guy. He's an Instagrammer. Mm -hmm. He gets in this little, like, uh, single-person, um, it's like a glider with a motor on it. I've seen that. And he's, his Instagram is called Shots From Above. And if you guys love just pictures of natural beauty, follow this dude. Like he has... Aerial yeah. photography. Aerial photographer. He is the best. I, I just, I look at his pictures and th this is like points of view that nobody ever sees or maybe probably nobody has ever seen, but he, f he flies over a lot of the New Mexico peaks and then Southern Colorado peaks and they're just absolutely breathtaking, I think. Nice. Um, so I'm, I would like to go either here or in New Mexico, actually horseback riding. I have not gone horseback riding the entire time I've lived in, in Albuquerque. Um, we have this place called Ghost Ranch. It's it's way out where um, Georgia O'Keeffe used to spend a lot of her time doing paintings and things. And I would love to do like a horseback riding tour, um, a trail ride out there. I just, uh, I, I think that that would be gorgeous. Abiquiu? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Xander, our friend Xander, shout out to Xander. Hey Xander. Hey Mandy. <laughs> hey what Xander, up? Mandy. You guys, they are so amazing. We love I you love guys. them. They're so they're so great. They're transplants to Albuquerque from China. Uh, yeah. Um. They're awesome. <laughs> yeah, and that and that in itself is really cool. Can I just say? Yeah. I am so thankful that we know these people from China who appreciate and, New Mexico, and they're appreciating the heck out of New Mexico. So yeah. I was checking out Xander's, and I hope Xander, you don't mind if I just say this. Um. If I, you're probably not listening, but if you are, um. They were posting some pictures of Abbey Q Lake, mm -hmm. and I'm like, wow, these people from across the globe are... are in a world-class city. Yeah, from a world-class city. <laughs> They're in our little 
state that is completely off everybody's radar and they are appreciating Abiquiu Lake and posting these pictures and you know and this these are things that I grew up appreciating and people from who aren't from here are just you know they're totally just taking it in and I I, I love that it just yeah. makes me feel good I also like Xander that you like hip-hop I'm just gonna say yeah. it we were listening I, think, to- I knew I knew we were gonna be friends when you started singing black and yellow Black and yellow, it. black and yellow. Yeah, Lindsay is. Uh, Lindsay is like, she's she's an old soul, but she's also a gangster on the weekends. So I sort of have. Yeah, it's maybe like a split personality. Like, she scares I'm, me sometimes. I'm an 80 year old gangster. Really, is what the deal is. Um, sometimes she'll rap in my face, and I'm like, I want to go hide. I have I have yet to to rap for our small group because they keep telling me to do it, and I'm like, I I just. I, I know how ridiculous it looks. I mean, I get it. Like I'm like this really pale, and I mean really pale white girl yeah it's it's funny we'll we'll contrast my super tanned dark skin and it's it's not it's not even funny but i can throw down some lyrics like like nobody's business and i completely have no rhythm i have (laughs) you know i just have no beat you know okay so let me just shout out to my favorite thing so i feel like like people talk about hip-hop and they talk about like like a love like a love for hip-hop and sometimes, like, hip-hop artists will, like, they'll do, like, an ode to hip-hop and they'll write love songs to the actual movement of hip-hop. And I get that. Um, the album that made me start to love hip-hop was The Score by the Fugees, hmm. 1996. Um, it is one of the best hip-hop albums ever made, period. Done. The end. Um, you've got Praz, you've got Lauren Hill, and you've got uh, Wyclef Jean. And... Um, it's just it's so it's so good um that was really the album that made me fall in love with hip-hop and it all kind of went from there like it's just it's so funny because it all just kind of escalated from there but yeah i would definitely say the score by the fugees uh, 1996 that that one is one of my favorites um i love some old school warren g (laughs) because i'm from the west coast and uh I could pretty much like wrap the entire Warren G album um, regulators if you want me to, but I'm not going to do it now. <laughs> I just, I love some old school. Like, I don't know. It's, it's just crazy. No, I'm not a huge fan. I'm going to turn on the water for a second. I'm not a huge fan of Dr. Dre. I do like Dr. Dre. I like the stuff he produces, but his music, like his music alone, eh, I could kind of take it or leave it, honestly. But I just, I love some hip hop. So Anyway, there's my little spiel. But if you have not checked out the score by the Fugees, it's old, but it's timeless. Check it out. Mm-hmm. It's amazing. Yeah, and I, I like some hip hop too. Um, it just the hip hop albums I like are few and far between. I love um, Nas. There's the is it called the Illist? It's Illmatic. Illmatic. Yeah. Illmatic. I like I like that. Um, That's got some straight like straight up East Coast beats on it for sure. I thought he was he's he's New York, right? Yeah, he's New York. Yeah. Um, I love the is it called the Black album? No, that's Metallica. Um, <laughs> it was uh, Jay-Z. What is it called? I think it is the Black Album. Is it called the Black Album? Okay. Yeah, that is awesome. Um, and then I love uh, King's Kaleidoscope, which is not, <laughs> which is not <laughs> hip-hop. Um, but uh, they, they are, or who was it? It was the, whoever the guy, I think his name is Chad or something. Um he was uh, tweeting like a, 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 a screenshot of what he was listening to, and he was listening to a, a guy called Show Baraka. And is rad. I love that album. Like it's it's hip hop. I'm not. I, I I tend to gravitate more towards like a like a Jimmy World or you know MXPX. Uh, obviously, more like, like punk persuasion. Punk, yes. Like some 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 screamo, some emo. You know what I mean? Like that's that's my deal. Um, some some classic rock like we were talking about but uh hip hop or yeah even like motown i love motown like some some stevie wonder um oh yeah a lot of hip hop samples motown yeah for sure but a lot of times like i i listen to hip hop i'm just like i right, you know whatever it doesn't really move me but this show baraka album is amazing and what's cool is i i think the guy's a christian and he's super honest about um stuff that's happening in uh in the christian world so like the church and and also racism christians don't talk about racism at least not where we're from in albuquerque uh christians don't they they avoid those topics when i think they should be absolutely talking about those things um it's because it makes them uncomfortable yeah 
And I, and I just I just caught myself in something. I'm like, oh, he's a Christian. <laughs> he's a believer. He's a believer. <laughs> oh, gosh. Like, this, that totally reminds me of high school days when, you know, I, I'm, I'm, to- I'm consuming all this music, right? Um, and I grew up in a family, not so much my parents, but my, a, a particular aunt of mine definitely was the type that would say, you know, she, she, she defined what Christian and secular art were to me. Like there's a difference, there's a chasm, a divide between secular and Christian. So she would, would tell me, oh, you can listen to DC Talk and Michael W. Smith. Uh, but don't listen to... When DC Talks, it's a serious thing. Yeah, when DC Talks, it is for sure serious. I was just quoting yeah. the, their old school album. Oh, is it? It was like a hip hoppy album in the yeah. 90s. And he's like, when DC Talks, it's a serious thing. <laughs> <laughs> ah, Newsboys, oh gosh. They it's don't a big, big house. No, they don't. Mm-hmm. And hopefully they don't play Newsboys either. Oh, that would be... That's probably more like hell than heaven. Oh. I am sorry. I'm sorry, Newsboys. Like... The Christian music scene, um, I'm not going to lie, like middle school days, I consumed that stuff like crazy. I would sit and I would check it out. And then I discovered MXPX. They were told to me in a like a youth group, like if you like, don't listen to Offspring, that's secular. If you like Offspring, then you would love MXPX. Don't listen to Metallica, that's secular. If you like Metallica, listen to P.O.D. Don't listen to Metallica ever, just because not. It's terrible. Sometimes I used to rock some Metallica, by the way. You know, I used to manage a metal band mm. when I was like 19, which is so funny to me because I don't like metal. I just happened to like my friends that were in the band and they were cool dudes. That's well, a good story. Let me rephrase it. Most of them were cool dudes, minus like one or two of them. Um, but I don't even like metal. So that mm. is so funny to me. Well, I'll show you some metal. Um, no, thank you. Yeah. One more thing I just wanted to say too. Sure. Um, when I was in high school, I would... I would uh, pull up the records. I would, you know, I'd buy the actual CD, right? We don't do that anymore. But I'd buy the actual CD, and I would go through the uh, the CD joy. book. Yeah, it really is. I used to, I used to really enjoy looking through the CD. Okay. But one of the first, I don't know if anybody else did this, but I would go to the. Uh, there was a part where everybody would, you know, they would thank their mom, their dad, whatever. But if they thanked God, I'm, I would say like, yes, yes, they're a Christian. Like, you know what I mean? Like. I would go... Jay-Z thanks God. I don't necessarily think he's a Christian. So does Kanye. I mean... Well, whatever. They might be. You don't know them. You don't brush their hair. That's true. I don't brush their hair, but... But, I mean, if if there was like a quote-unquote secular band that I liked, I would go straight to those credits. I would would look... If there was even one band member, like if it was a bassist or the guitarist or somebody that said... And lastly, I'd thank I'd like to thank my Lord and Savior Jesus Christ for giving me this ability. Blah blah blah. Like, I would be so happy because I know they're on my team. You know, they're they're a Christian. I'd be I'd get super stoked and excited. They're wearing their little jersey. They work their Jesus jersey. Fighting for the cause. Yeah. Wow. And now I look back at that, I'm like, that's kind of silly. Well, yeah, it's kind of silly. But you know, to okay, and just to talk about like Christ, Christian music. I'm with you. I'm not a big fan of the Christian music community. I, it's just not my deal. Um, there are some good artists out there. I'm not saying all Christian music is terrible, horrible crap. Just, you know. Mm-hmm. Um, but there are some good artists out there. But I would have to say, like, my favorite Christian band is Me Without You. Um, I talk about them all the time because they're amazing. And it's not because they're Christians. It's because they are actually producing art that, okay, if you want to throw it into a religious category, go ahead. But it's raw and it's real. And it's really honest. Mm-hmm. Um, so I love Me Without You. And then like, yeah, but then I also love some Wu-Tang Clan. So, I mean, I don't know. I don't know how you handle mm-hmm. that. Um, Aesop Rock and Atmosphere and well, if you De La to Soul. Those. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's wonderful. Yeah, I think music is just amazing how we can just get into it and enjoy it. And it makes us feel better. And um, there was a new, who was it? I think it was Foster the People. Mm-hmm. album that came out and I just started listening to it and I I enjoyed it and it just There's... makes you makes you feel good puts you in a good mood and it's like man this is you know life is about enjoying art and being with people and stuff so so there is a new there, no, it's not a new album but I just wanted to kind of wrap this album because it's been on my playlist like over and over lately mm-hmm. for hip hop and this is kind of one of those that samples a little bit of Motown and a little bit of soul so it's not really gangster rap at all it's more it's more just like hip hop that samples some really good old school tracks um, and vinyl 
The guy's name is Odyssey, but he spells it O-D-D-I-S-E-E. Um, and the album is called The Good Fight. It is a really good album. Um, oh my gosh. And it's not super vulgar. There's not a whole lot of like explicit anything on there. It's just some really good beats and some really good rhymes. And he throws down some really just like, just like some sick lyrics. So check it out. It's Odyssey. The album's called The Good Fight. Again, he spells it O-D-D-I-S-E. Um, it's just so dang good. I can't even, I can't even tell you. So yeah, if you're wanting to get a, like a little intro to hip hop, but you want something a little less, um, a little less uh, vulgar or gangster, definitely check it out. Yeah. Yeah. And I think we'll wrap up here, but um, so we have a, we have a uh, baby camera um, in, in, in our, our five-year-old's room. Yeah, I know. That's Juliet. Oh, okay. What'd you think it was? I thought it was Luke with a really bad haircut. No, oh, no, that's truly it. <laughs> so, <laughs> we have a baby camera in our in our five year old's room that he's had since he was a baby, obviously. But it, whenever it senses motion, I get an email of it, and uh, I get an email in my inbox right now of our, of our two year old standing on our five year old's bunk bed, probably trying to get up there because he wants to be up there, and our little baby. So it's kind of cool. We took the ladder off so he can't get up there. Yeah, we took yeah we unscrewed the ladder. Bunk beds are dangerous. Yeah, yeah. So, so. how funny. Parenting but anyway, from afar. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, today I think we're gonna go swimming. Swimming. Maybe check out a ghost yeah. town or something. Maybe check check out a ghost town. I want to I want to check out the Salton Sea. Me too. It's like. That's bizarre. Look at it. It's up. so it's... interesting to me. It used to be like a getaway spot for people, and Look now it it's like a just a dead. It's like the Dead Sea of the, of the of California. It's it's, it's literally part. like a natural phenomenon. Yeah. And it's it used to be this crazy beautiful saltwater lake inland here in the middle of the mm-hmm. desert and it was like an oasis and people mm-hmm. had vacation homes. They spent all this money buying hotels and developing right. it. And then it was poisoned by agriculture and all the runoff from all the crops and stuff. And now it's nothing and it's just like a it's like a desert ghost town right. that used to be like this amazing place mm-hmm. so it'd be kind of cool to see some i want to go take some pictures i kind of p- put some stuff on the on the uh, instagram yeah follow us yeah. on instagram yeah. twitter uh email us i mean i don't even know if people listen ryan does <laughs> we it, our the internet says we have subscribers cool so keep on um, keeping on keep on keeping on and kids in the future uh the salt and sea might be revitalized robots are going to run it probably or it might be nothing. <laughs> or it might be nothing. <laughs> it might just disappear. Maybe maybe there's an earthquake and that that you're gonna know about, um, where California breaks off into the ocean and you know we can only hope. Oh yeah. That was one of the the one last <laughs> thought. Kidding. I have so many different thoughts. You do. We were watching Portugal the Man yeah. in this really old structure, this really old venue mm-hmm. uh, a couple days ago. And I was thinking, like, you know, we, you keep hearing about how the big earthquake is going to happen. The big one. Uh, in Southern California. It's, it's super scary to me. Here. Like, earthquakes are scary to me. I, I didn't really? grow up. No, they, they, yeah, they, I didn't grow up with earthquakes. So I could teach you some um, quick awareness if you want. I could just imagine being in this venue from 1940. I don't know if it's been retrofitted with, like, some good earthquake, you know, shock absorbers like, like L.A. City Hall was. Um, Probably. But I, I was just, like, imagining, like, the big earthquake happening. And all these chandeliers falling on people, and the and the pillars collapsing, and it was really just really scary to me. Wow. But um, kids in the future, if you're listening to this, um, you'll you'll hear it. So yeah, well, it'll be interesting to yeah. see what happens. Okay, I, I'm gonna shut up now. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Well, have a great day. Enjoy yeah. your life. Yeah, and we'll maybe talk to you tomorrow. Maybe in two days. Who knows? Maybe never. Maybe never. Hopefully not ever. But all right, uh, all right guys, you have a good one.